Now, what is psoriasis? Psoriasis is a chronic condition which occurs on the elbows, knees, scalp, and back, and it presents as scaly red patches with a silvery scale. And it is important for the patient to seek help because we can treat these patients adequately. Now, patients with psoriasis may have a genetic tendency to have psoriasis. In many patients, there's a family history of psoriasis, but there are certain trigger factors which cause psoriasis. Now, one of them is throat infections like streptococcal throat. That can cause a type of psoriasis called gut aid psoriasis, which presents as little spots on the back. And fortunately, this type of psoriasis can clear completely. It affects mainly children. Now, psoriasis is a condition that affects all ages, mainly from the 20s onwards, and patients can be traumatized by the skin lesions because of the fact that the lesions are red and scaly and inflamed. They can get severe itch and also burning and pain. Now, what is psoriasis caused by? The exact cause is not known, but we are aware that it's an immunological condition. The basic problem is that there is inflammation of the skin. And what essentially happens, the cells that we produce on the skin, they go to the top of the skin over 28 days. In psoriasis, inflammation causes these cells to rapidly replicate and go over a period of four days. So therefore, the cells go to the top of the skin rapidly and it accumulates and forms scaly spots. Now, in terms of psoriasis, there are different forms of psoriasis. We get the normal common plot psoriasis, which are the itchy patches on the elbows and knees. Then one can get the gut aid psoriasis, G-U-T-T-A-T-E, which I spoke about. And one can also get psoriatic arthritis. One can get psoriasis, as Prof. Reins mentioned, in the armpits, in the groin below the breast, and that's called inverse psoriasis. It presents in a different way. Basically, it's not scaly because those areas, we have lots of moisture. So it presents as red, uh, red inflamed patches. And then we can get psoriasis that occurs all over the body, which is called erythrodermic. Now, an important point is to be aware that psoriasis can also affect the scalp, the nails. The nails present with either pitting or they may have uh, nail dystrophy or the nail can be crumbled or it can have thickening under the nail. And one can get scalp psoriasis, which may present initially what looks like dandruff. And later on, it can present as raised thick spots on the scalp. It can be extremely scaly. And then the psoriatic arthritis is important. This affects at least 30% of our patients with psoriasis. And the arthritis mainly affects the finger joints, but it can affect the joints on the elbows, knees, on the spine as well. Severe psoriatic arthritis can be associated with severe nail changes as well. Now, patients with psoriatic arthritis, they often have disabling arthritis, which limits their motion, affects their, their quality of life. So that is very, very important. As far as psoriasis is concerned, the major problem with psoriasis is psychosocial stress. Because psoriasis is visual, the, the uh, population might think that the psoriasis is contagious and therefore they may shun patients with psoriasis. And it is important for us to make patients aware that it is not contagious and it's not going to spread to their spouse or their family members. And again, the patients with psoriasis have severe stigmatization. They often become depressed because the scaling is severe and they may have problems in their interpersonal social interactions at home. They have problems with their career. When they apply for jobs, the person may look at their hands and look at the psoriasis involving the scalp and they may have a negative uh, assessment of that patient. Patients with psoriasis often have low esteem and they often have psych psychological problems, including depression. Now, the important point is that psoriasis can lead to depression and many of our patients have depression and we need to take that into account. The most important point about psoriasis is that we need to be able to communicate with the patient, inform them that they're not alone. We need to have a holistic approach to treating the patient. And finally, 
patient education is the hallmark of psoriasis. Now, because there's a family history of psoriasis, the person who's got psoriasis, the, the, the mom, must not think that her child is necessarily going to get psoriasis, although there's a small percentage who can get psoriasis. Now, in terms of management of psoriasis, we need to treat the patient in a, on an individual basis. It is important for the patient to get the help of a dermatologist. And usually we have moisturizers, which actually improve the texture of the skin and decrease scaling of the skin as well. In fact, plain ordinary Vaseline is effective, and we may have moisturizing as moisturizers containing urea. And then as Prof. Franks mentioned, we have what we call keratolytic agents, which actually decrease the, uh, the keratin or scale, and this is salicylic acid. Now, the salicylic acid is mixed in white soft paraffin or Vaseline, and one can apply it uh, in, on a daily basis, and that removes or decreases the scaling and the plaques as well. Now, what about treatment of mild to moderate psoriasis? I need to emphasize that the majority of patients have mild psoriasis, so they can be easily treated with topical preparations. The preparations that we use are tar preparations, bithernol preparations, and one that is extremely used in uh, pr private practice is topical steroid creams. We have preparations like Clobex spray, and we have ointments like Dovate, which are extremely beneficial in treating psoriasis. Now, the new generation treatment is with combination of vitamin D and a particular steroid cream, and this is called Dovobet. The Dovobet is extremely effective in decreasing the redness and the scaling, and we have both the Dovobet for the body and Dovobet on the scalp. As we're discussing the scalp, uh, we need to make sure that the scalp is not scaly, so we can use the same salicylic acid on the scalp in the shampoo form, and that helps to decrease the scaling and allows the other preparations to penetrate. Shampoos containing tar are very effective as well. And then we also have Clobex shampoo and Dovobet gel as well. In terms of psoriasis of the nails, as I mentioned, nail psoriasis is a difficult problem to treat, but what I advise my patients is to actually soak the nails in lukewarm water with one teaspoon of milk and one teaspoon of oil. And after 10 minutes, their nail is soft and they can pare it down. And thereafter, they can apply the ointments. The Dove cream is very effective uh, to decrease the excess scaling. But as I mentioned, nail psoriasis needs uh, 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 proper management. We also use Dovobet ointment for nail psoriasis. We use urea preparations to soften the scaling. And then if it's very severe, then we might treat with what we call intranasal cortisone, where we inject cortisone around the nail, and this can help. But if there's severe nail psoriasis, then as Prof mentioned, we would use internal therapy, and this would include medications such as metotrexate or we may use neoticosone or we may use biologics if it's very severe. Now, what about psoriasis affecting the body, scalp, trunk, and if it's moderate to severe? We, we go on to oral agents. These are taken by mouth. And the one that's prescribed is metotrexate. Now, metotrexate actually helps in the, preventing the division of the cells in the skin. So it cuts down the uh, division of the cells and therefore improves psoriasis. This is taken by mouth once a week, and one has to take folic acid the rest of the week. When we prescribe metotrexate, one needs to do blood tests, including liver tests, a blood count, and kidney tests to make sure that all the tests are normal before we prescribe metotrexate. Now, it is important to advise patients not to consume alcohol when they take metotrexate because the metotrexate works through the liver and they consume alcohol and metotrexate, they can get liver damage. While we're on that topic, I must emphasize that alcohol intake certainly aggravates psoriasis and in addition to that, obesity. Now, psoriasis is more than skin deep. Psoriasis does not only affect the skin and the joints, but it can affect other parts of the body and the immune system. And it can actually be associated with, with heart problems. It can be associated with arthritis and can be associated 
with diabetes as well. And in fact, there's a metabolic syndrome which encompasses all of these. What about further treatment for moderate to severe psoriasis? We have a tablet called neotidoson. We have cyclosporin, but the latest advances is biologics. And because I'm in pr private practice, we have more access to biologics. So I use biologics, including Tremphire, including Cosentix, as well as Stellara and Humira in my practice. This is reserved for the patients with moderately severe psoriasis, and the results are excellent. Because the biologics work, again, the immune system and the inflammation, they provide an excellent response in patients with moderate to severe psoriasis. And uh, the results are amazing. These patients achieve a good quality of health. They actually lead a better life and they can be in remission, which is clearance of the psoriasis for prolonged periods of time. So again, as I mentioned, although psoriasis is not curable, we have treatments that can actually clear psoriasis for long periods of time and provide a holistic approach to psoriasis. At this moment, I think we can take calls and then we can get back. Thank you, Dr. Dockrat. Um, I'll just um, start with a question that was on our um, on our chat earlier on, saying I was on embryo, embryo trial for two years, about three years ago, and I was clear for about for, without any treatment. Why can't we go on biologics without going through the whole process of met, metotrexate? If you've been on, on Embril and it's provided an excellent response, there's no reason why you should uh, not use Embril again. So what you need to do is see your dermatologist who will examine you in detail and motivate. This is very important. We need to do a special squatting system to show how severe the psoriasis is. We need to get a letter from the patient to say how it's affecting their quality of life. And then once we send this to the medical aid, the medical aid would consider, you know, allowing embryo to be used. I must emphasize that a fair number of medical aids have actually covered for biologics. There are certain medical aids which have an exclusion, but this patient, if they belong to the correct medical aid, the patient will be able to get onto the biologic embryo, which is very effective and does not have to go on to metotrexate because of the fact that the patient has been on embryo, it means that the patient has moderate to severe psoriasis. So the person deserves to go back onto embryo. Thank you very much. Um, Pat, can I pass the questions back to you? Would that be all right with you, Dr. Dr. Yes. 100%, certainly. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Dockret. I've also been a patient of yours way back when, so I know you very Wonderful. well. It's, it's, <laughs> nice, it's nice to interact with you again, Patricia. <laughs> yes, doctor. Um, the first question is related to the VAX. Adverse effects on the skin after having the VAX. People I know with rheumatoid arthritis have had flares after the vaccine. Please comment. Uh, this is an excellent uh, question, uh, Patricia. Uh, first of all, uh, the vaccine can be used in patients with psoriasis as well as those on biologics. There's no contraindication unless a person, uh, you know, has active COVID, then they, you know, we should hold on with the biologic. Now, as far as the flare-up of the arthritis is concerned, uh, we, you know, the rheumatologist is best, you know, able to answer that. But as far as the vaccine aggravating psoriasis, uh, in many, in most of our patients with psoriasis have had their vaccine and there's been no relationship with the vaccine. So it is quite safe to take the vaccine. Okay, thank you, doctor. Those who are on methotrexate should admit the next dose of the vaccination. Is this so? Y yes, yes, yeah. What I would actually recommend, although there's no direct correlation, I would suggest that if they're having the COVID vaccine, then they can delay it by a few days, but uh, not omit it completely. It's generally safe to take the metotrexate and the vaccine. All right. The next question, what is the treatment for arthritic psoriasis of the finger joints? 
which are not severe at all and cause just very slight pain? What could be the best treatment for that? Uh, again, uh, with psoriasis of the joints, one needs to use anti-inflammatory medications like Coxflam or Ponsan or Miprodol uh, or Voltaren. And then if it's very severe, we can inject the joints to be, uh, improve the, uh, the mobility of the joints. And again, we need to advise them about, you know, exercise and movement of the joints. And uh, in terms of psoriasis of the joints, if it is severe, then we normally use metotrexate as well as anti-inflammatories. And patients with severe psoriatic arthritis that affects many joints, they will qualify, apart from metotrexate, they will qualify for biologics and they do excellent with biologics. Okay, thank you. Okay, the last question on here is quite lengthy. How advanced or deep is the relationship for dermatology and homeopathy? Alternative medicines for us as psoriasis patients. Pharmaceutical companies are always showing or not really interested in promoting medicines that can help the body correct or heal itself. I guess in a nutshell, we as psoriasis sufferers have an imbalance in our immune systems. Even our medical aid companies will not really assist us with trying to help guide us as real sufferers to truly help us and have that once complete normal body. I for one am trying alternative and natural ways to allow the body to realign itself through time and patience. The person says, I hope I'm not opening a Pandora box here, but with our advancement in modern technology, it is so hard to believe that we as the human race are nowhere near helping each other or just making money out of each other. My thoughts and a serious question that I guess will never be truly answered. So that's... That's an excellent question. I think we need to be, uh, you know, uh, realistic about uh, various treatments. First of all, we as dermatologists and doctors look at evidence-based medicine. So we have patients from all over the world, and we must remember there are millions of patients in psoriasis, and they've used all types of treatment. At this moment in time, there is no correlation between homeopathic treatment and psoriasis. I understand that the patient talks about the immune system and the inflammatory markers, but these need to be targeted. The homeopathic treatment does not actually target those. So again, I need to emphasize that we have to be realistic in what we can achieve. In terms of diet as well, there are no dietary factors that affect psoriasis. So it is important to have things in a, a realistic uh, assessment. As far as pharmaceutical companies are concerned, uh, I, for one, cannot talk about the pharmaceutical companies, but what I can actually emphasize is that whatever medications that are used and whatever uh, that are released for treatment of dermatological problems, including psoriasis, have been tried and tested in millions of patients worldwide. So these medications that come onto the market, they, we have evidence-based medicine. So there is proof that they work. So it is important for us to be realistic. And I understand that many patients become frustrated and they become negative about the treatment. There's a lot of frustration because uh, patients with psoriasis are sometimes not treated adequately and in a holistic manner. What is important is that we as dermatologists need to spend time. And that, that time is very important in trying to assess the patient's needs and patient's treatment. And if they have questions, we need to answer them like what we are doing now, and also to try and counsel them and to improve their psychosocial state. In terms of psychosocial state, what I would actually emphasize is that we need to again have empathy. We need to tell the patients to basically try and de-stress. They can do yoga or can, they can do meditation, or they can do breathing exercises. The, they can talk to their family members. They can talk to counselors. They can speak to their dermatologists. And this is where the psoriasis support group is excellent. We, as part of the psoriasis support group, give these patients hope. And again, I need to emphasize that hope is very important. Don't give up. Seek help. 
join the psoriasis association and we have wonderful people like all of you who are able to impart uh, a more sort of comforting uh, you know assessment and management of those patients Okay, that's the last question um, from the group. Um, Veronica, over to you. Thank you, Pat. I see there is a question co that's come up here in the chat. Thank you, Dr. Dokra, for a very informative discussion. Thanks to the individuals making the session possible and also to all the other presenters on the topic. Oh, okay, then there's a, a, that's a thank you. And then thank you for the informative presentation. I suffer from moderate to severe psoriasis. As a healthcare worker, at higher risk for infectious diseases, should I be concerned with metotrexate and its immunosuppressive properties? That is a very important question. And uh, basically uh, what we need to do is we need to manage these patients. So it's not only prescribing the metotrexate, but to assess these patients on a regular basis. So metotrexate is basically safe if one uses it judiciously and responsibly. We in dermatology use low doses of metotrexate. So although metotrexates were originally prescribed for cancer, we in dermatologists use decreased doses, which do not usually cause problem. So it is important for the patient to communicate with the dermatologist. And by doing regular blood tests, we can make sure that the patient's you know, immune system and general health being is, is maintained. So again, if the patient has any infection, one should actually make the doctor away. As far as biologics are concerned, the old generation biologics, they were associated with tuberculosis, but again, we normally screen for TB if one uses the old generation, as well as the new generation uh, biologics. But the new generation biologics, there's less incidence of TB. They're generally quite safe. Biologics are essentially safe, and again, they must be administered and monitored by the dermatologist. I've got quite a few patients in my practice and their whole lives have actually improved and they've had a very good quality of life. They've been able to cope and they're doing well on biologics. That's very reassuring. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Dockrat. Um, would you like to add more information or should we ask the floor the people um, present here, if they've got any other questions to unmute themselves. Okay, I think we can go ahead with questions and then I'd like to conclude. Thank you. Um, someone on uh, Hawaii has unmuted themselves. Would you like to ask your question? Okay, there's one that's come up in the chat to say, if your medical aid doesn't cover for biologics and you want to purchase, is that possible? And how do you go about doing that? Uh, again, an important question. Uh, the most important thing is we should actually uh, get medical aids to cover. It's important that the dermatologist motivates correctly. And uh, we have various guidelines in motivating for biologics. And usually those motivations help except for a few medical aids. As far as purchasing the biologics, we as dermatologists don't dispense it. The dermatologist usually does a full clinical assessment on the patient, do the blood tests that are relevant. And uh, what we do is we give a prescription to the patient and then the patient can either go to their pharmacy or they can uh, get it direct from the uh, pharmaceutical company via courier service. The pharmaceutical company will liaise with the dermatologist. We have to send a consent form. We have to send a prescription to the pharma pharmaceutical company, and then they liaise with the patients, and then they would actually arrange to supply the patients. As far as cost of biologics are concerned, um, the individual uh, pharmaceutical companies have different prices for their biologics. So one needs to actually be assessed by a dermatologist who can give them the prices of the biologics and then the patient can make an informed decision and you know uh, look for the best biologic that would be suitable for them. So again, assessment by a dermatologist, motiva uh, motivation letter if they're on medical aid. As this patient mentioned that she's not on medical aid, she needs to pay herself. And the uh, pharmaceutical companies actually accommodate for patients. Uh, so again, 
uh, important for dermatologists to assess and then to, to give a prescriptions and the, the pharmaceutical companies have a relationship and association with the patient as well as the service provider or the pharmacy. And then biologics are given by injection. So certain biologics are given at uh, different intervals and they're given into the thigh or the abdomen. The injections are not painful. The injections come as a loaded injection so that basically uh, it's very easy to administer the injection. The injection can be administered by the patient at home or if they want it to be administered by the general practitioner or dermatologist, it can be done. And uh, many of my patients prefer to come to the practice and uh, basically we administer the biologics. But those that live far away, we, uh, you know, we get the pharmaceutical company to deliver to their homes and then they administer. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to ask a question? Uh, just unmute yourself. Anyone's welcome to ask a question. Okay, then um, uh, Dr. Darkrat, would you like to just add anything else you'd like to before we end off? Uh, yes, certainly. In conclusion, uh, what we need to provide for our patients with psoriasis is hope. What they need to do is they need to try and seek the help of uh, dermatologists and the uh, you know, patient support groups, very, very important. What we need to emphasize to them that the psoriasis is not the end of the world. They can seek help, that the treatment can be tailored to the type of psoriasis they have, and all types of psoriasis can be treated. In the old days, we used to just use creams and ointments, but in the last 10 years, we have advances. We have various assessments of what causes psoriasis. We know that it's an immune condition with inflammation. So we treat them as a, 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 as a medical problem as well. Uh, again, we need to emphasize to them that the psoriasis is not skin deep. If they have uh, any of the, what they call comorbidities or associated factors associated with psoriasis, uh, they need to be assessed for that. Uh, important is obesity can aggravate psoriasis. Uh, patients with psoriasis can get hypertension and ischemic heart disease. Uh, again, alcohol intake aggravates psoriasis, and again, smoking can aggravate psoriasis. Uh, what we have discussed is the types of psoriasis. We've discussed the aggravating factors and the trigger. Again, I'd like to emphasize that certain medications can aggravate psoriasis and trigger psoriasis. These medications are medications for high blood pressure, including beta blocker, a tablet used for malaria called chloroquine, a tablet used for psychological problems uh, called lithium. So again, one needs to you know, discuss that with the dermatologist. One needs to make the patients aware that various types of psoriasis require personalized treatment. One needs to be aware that uh, phototherapy is very effective. Uh, phototherapy is UVB phototherapy, which we administer in the surgery or at the hospitals like Pritzker, and they have it at Prof. Rang's rooms in Century City as well. At my practice, I have many, many patients on phototherapy, and after a period of uh, 20 treatments, the patient's psoriasis can improve to such an extent that they can go into what we call remission, where the psoriasis is clear for a prolonged period of time. So again, uh, if they have more than a few spots, phototherapy is excellent. And again, as I mentioned, the internal therapy can include metotrexate, neotikason, which is a type of vitamin A, uh, cyclosporin. Normally, cyclosporin is used for re prevent rejection in heart transplant patients, but they found it to be effective in psoriasis. And if the patient's psoriasis is severe enough, moderate to severe, then one can consider biologics. As I mentioned, biologics are not reserved for all patients, but in those patients that have moderate to severe psoriasis, the biologics you know, provide an excellent quality of health, and it works you know, on the actual 
cause of psoriasis. So it targets the immune system. Dr. Darkrat, are there any side effects that come from the use of biologics? Ask someone in the chat. Uh, certainly. Uh, side effects are not common, but again, uh, you know, we have to screen for TB. If a patient has had any positive test for TB, then we add an anti-TB tablet called INH. Uh, these biologic, they may cause a bit of inflammation on the injection site. I haven't experienced that with our patients. Sometimes they can cause a flu-like illness or, or a bit of uh, running nose. And uh, again, you know, we monitor the biologics. The new generation biologics are generally safe. And as with all drugs, you know, you can get side effects. But in my practice, I haven't had any patients who have had side effects from biologics. But again, we need to monitor these patients. We need to use the biologics judiciously and if they use correctly, they certainly provide a good quality and hope for psoriasis sufferers. Now, finally, I'd like to conclude that, you know, we have had advances, you know, from the old days of just applying ointments, then to using medications by mouth, and then to using biologics. And I hope in the next, you know, few years, they would try and identify the exact cause. At the moment, they know all the mechanisms which cause uh, psoriasis, the inflammation of the skin, the immune system dysregulation, and hopefully, hopefully we'll find a cause for psoriasis and we'll really be able to treat these patients. We cannot allow patients to suffer extensively. I had a call from a patient in KwaZulu-Natal with severe psoriasis and he sent me his photographs and he suffers to such an extent that he's become depressed and we should be careful our patients with severe psoriasis do not become severely depressed or suicidal. This is very, very important. So we need to provide a comprehensive holistic treatment, including medications, as well as psychological support, emotional support, the help of the psoriasis support group. And in that way, we can encompass all management of psoriasis.